The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the proper installation of Hoshizaki ice machines. While the KM Cuber and Flaker machines differ in some features, the installations are basically the same. In order to avoid problems after startup, it is important that you install these machines properly the first time. There are several things you should do before installing the ice maker. First, take a look at the installation site. Remember, these ice makers are not intended for outdoor use. For best results, the ice maker should not be located next to ovens, grills, or other high heat producing equipment. The location should provide a firm, level foundation for the ice maker and storage bin. Check the installation site to be sure there is an adequate water supply and proper drainage. Be sure to allow for a 6 inch clearance at the rear, sides, and top of the machine's intended location to allow for proper air circulation and ease of maintenance and service. If you are installing an auger type ice maker, it is necessary to allow adequate clearance above the unit to allow for auger removal during service. Next, inspect the exterior of the cartons for visible damage and unpack the storage bin. Make sure it is the correct bin for your application. Attach the four adjustable legs provided to the bottom of the storage bin and position it in the selected permanent position. Then, unpack the ice maker being careful to save the registration cards located in the pouch on the carton. Also, remove all packing material and tape from inside of the machine and remove the package containing the installation manual and accessories. Always refer to this manual or your Hoshizaki technician's pocket guide and carefully follow the instructions for installing the ice maker. To prevent damage, remove the outer panels before installing the ice maker. Now, check to see that the refrigerant lines do not rub or touch other lines or surfaces. On air-cooled units, be sure that the fan blade turns freely. Check that the compressor is snug on all mounting pads. Finally, check the nameplate to make sure that your electrical service is the same as the voltage specified. The gasket provided with Hoshizaki bins provides an adequate seal between the two units. Place the ice maker on the top of the storage bin and secure it by using the two mounting brackets and four bolts provided. Level the ice maker storage bin in both the left to right and front to rear directions using the adjustable bin legs. If you are stacking two S units on a single bin, remove the top panel and ABS evaporator cover from the lower unit. Set the second unit on top and secure it with the brackets provided in the accessory package. Remove the bin control holder and bulb from the top bracket and route it to the bottom unit bracket, taking care not to touch the suction or discharge lines or the compressor base with the control capillary tube. Use the top bulb holder to secure it to the bottom bracket. Plug in both bin control plugs and be aware that Hoshizaki's stacked units operate independently of each other. When making the electrical connections, it is important that they be made in accordance with the instructions on the warning tag provided with the leads in the junction box. Make sure the white leads are connected to the neutral conductor of the power source. To prevent possible electric shock or damage to the machine, be sure to install a proper ground wire to the ice maker. On 208-230 volt single phase applications, a dedicated neutral wire is required by national electrical codes. A separate power supply or receptacle is required for the installation of each ice maker. Be sure to check the nameplate for proper capacity. On units requiring the installation of a remote condenser, the unit must be installed in a permanent location. If the condenser unit supplied is not the appropriate Hoshizaki condenser, be sure that the application has been approved in writing by the Hoshizaki Technical Support Department. The installation site should be firm and flat. The location should also be reasonably dry and well ventilated. This means locating the unit away from standing water and providing a 24 inch clearance on both the front and rear of the unit. Also, when locating the condenser, keep in mind that the maximum refrigerant line length with a factory charge is 66 feet. This can be extended to a maximum of 100 feet with an additional charge. Consult the manual for recommendations for line size and charge amounts. 
To install the remote condenser unit, first remove it from the carton and secure the leg squarely with eight M8 by 16 millimeter hexagon bolts and M8 nuts. Next, secure the legs to the roof curb with eight bolts in the eight mounting holes. When installing two remote condenser units, you may stack them to save space. Attach the upper condenser unit on top of the lower unit and secure it with the four screws provided. When installing two copper tubing sets between the ice makers and condenser units, take extra care to mark the refrigerant lines and electrical connections. This will assure that they do not get crossed during installation. Each copper tubing should be sized properly and insulated separately. Pre-charged tubing kits are available from Hoshizaki America in 20, 35, and 55 foot lengths. Line sets fabricated on the job should be evacuated through the charging ports on the AeroQuip couplings and charged with refrigerant vapor to a pressure of 15 to 30 PSIG. Pre-charged tubing kits do not need to be evacuated. To connect line sets to the condenser and ice making units, remove the plastic caps that protect the couplings and place a small amount of clean dry refrigerant oil on the O-rings and male threads of each connection. Connect the refrigerant lines equipped with the proper size AeroQuip fittings to the connection of the condenser unit and ice maker. Then, tighten the fittings until they bottom out and turn them one quarter round more. This provides a leak-free brass-to-brass seal. The fan control wiring from the ice making unit requires a three-wire circuit. To connect this circuit, first, remove the louver panel and junction box cover from the condenser unit. This circuit should be routed through seal-tight conduit. A disconnect may be required by local code. Connect the fan motor leads in the junction box of the remote condenser unit to the fan motor leads in the junction box of the ice maker. A proper ground wire is required to prevent possible electrical shock. The ice maker inlet water line must be sized correctly for proper operation. Check your manual carefully to be sure which size is required for the ice maker you are installing. Depending upon the local water quality, the installation of an external filter with an adequate flow rate may be required for the ice making inlet. The water supply pressure should be a minimum of 10 PSIG and a maximum of 113 PSIG. If the pressure exceeds 113 PSIG, you will need to install a pressure reducing valve. On water cooled models, two separate water supply inlets are provided one for the ice making inlet and the other for the water cooled condenser inlet. The drain outlet for the ice maker reservoirs uses a three quarter inch female pipe thread or FPT. The drain for condensation is a three eighths inch ID pipe. Be sure the ice maker drain and the condenser drain piping connections are made separately from the bin drain. Hard piping with copper or PVC is recommended. On water-cooled models, a separate one inch FPT connection is provided for the condenser drain outlet. All Hoshizaki ice makers should be installed in accordance with all applicable national, state, and local regulations. Also, a backflow preventer may be required by local codes. Now that you have installed the Hoshizaki ice maker, review the final checklist provided in the installation manual. At the point that the list requires you to start the ice machine, flush the water system thoroughly and check the unit for proper operation. Check the bin control switch for correct operation and position. This can be accomplished by holding an ice cube in contact with the bulb while the ice maker is running. The machine should stop within six to 10 seconds. Once the installation is complete, Carefully score the edges of the protective plastic film and peel the film from the exterior panels. Make sure to give the end user the instruction manual and review the operation of the ice maker, stressing the importance of performing the recommended periodic maintenance. Also, be sure to give the end user the name and phone number of an authorized service agent. Remind them to fill out the warranty tag and forward it to the factory for warranty registration.
Once you have successfully completed the checklist, you can be sure that the Hoshizaki ice maker is installed correctly and will avoid the unnecessary problems that sometimes occur due to improper installation. Remember, while this video has shown you the proper installation procedures, you should always refer to the ice maker manual or your Hoshizaki technician's pocket guide for detailed installation information. <laughs>